And I cross the mystic sea Oh, that I would hear him say I am satisfied with thee I am satisfied I am satisfied I am satisfied with Jesus But the question comes to me as I think on Calvary is my master satisfied with Dear God, our Father, we thank you for this week of revival. We thank you for the challenge of your word. We thank you for the reconditioning of our hearts. We thank you for the re-establishment of our Christian constitution. We pray tonight, O oh God, that you would restore that in us that we had when we first met you. Give us that joy, give us that determination, give us that level of commitment that makes us do exceedingly and abundantly more than we have done in days gone by. Oh God, how we thank you for your Bethel Church, how we thank you for this wonderful family of believers, how we thank you for Dr. Rusley Monroe and his leadership. Continue to bless them and keep them. Make them a beacon light in this community. Thank you for every member of this church and thank you especially for these preachers and pastors here tonight. Continue to use all of us until your people are satisfied with Jesus until somebody comes running and crying, what must I do to be saved? Have your way with us again tonight, we ask. Speak to us as only you can do. And we will be so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. It's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord one more time and certainly I'm grateful to Dr. Rugely Monroe, the sage of this house for allowing me to share this week of revival. The exposure has certainly done me good and I hope that you have been blessed and challenged to explore new dimensions and avenues in your walk with Jesus Christ. God wants to do a new thing in you. He needs us. I don't know who it was that said it, Dr. Monroe. Somebody said God ain't coming down and talk to nobody no more. God has put us here. And he is speaking through people, through us. Deacon Gerald Mayweather at the Holy Bible Way Church says often his prayer, we're the only Bible that some people will ever read. And so I want to encourage you in the Lord to do the work of him that sent you while it is day. But the night is coming when no man can work the work of the Lord. We celebrated the life of Dr. Larry Jackson of Smyrna Baptist Church today. A young man come down, cut down by cancer uh, in his 60s great educator, great scholar, great Bible teacher and preacher, house full of folk, and he is absent from us because a habit called cigarettes. He could not turn them loose. 
I was talking to Pop Monroe and I said to him, I wonder what would happen if every Christian that knows Jesus, because there are some Christians, Brother Monroe, that don't know Jesus. They have declared themselves Christians by their own standard. But what would happen in the world if every believer all over the world would take one day and tell everybody you come in contact with something good about Jesus? You, you reckon it would make a difference if all of us would open our mouths and speak for him one day at the same time wonder what would happen. I believe that a great move of God would take place. And as you read 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, how many of you got to do that reading when Solomon had finished praying, the fire of the Lord came down and consumed the burnt offering. The Holy Spirit was so thick in the house that even the priests couldn't go in. Anybody here Catholic tonight? Anybody here Catholic? That's why, that's why I can say this without any offense. <clears throat> that's why we don't have priests in our denomination. Somebody say why, Pastor? Because we don't need them. We, we have access to God through the great high priest, Jesus Christ. We, we don't have to confess our sins to a man that's having trouble being celibate. We, we, we can confess our sins to a man that was likewise tempted as we are but yet without sin. And, and that is why when we pray, we always close our prayer in the name of Jesus because he is the one advocate between God and man, Jesus Christ, who sitteth on the right hand of the Father. See, that's what I like about El Bethel. He sits on the right hand of the Father and he's constantly making intercession he's pleading our case to God and he has died and bled and we have been redeemed by his blood so much so that when God looks at us he does not see our sins but he sees us covered by the by the saving blood I don't know if I'm talking to anybody he sees us covered by the saving blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why every now and then around the first Sunday you'll hear us sing, What Can Wash Away My Sin. <laughs> no, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's why we sing, Oh, how precious is that flow that makes me whiter than snow. There is no other fountain that I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That woman went to work that morning in New York. She was on her way to work, and somehow or another, she dropped her coffee cup. And uh, when she went to pick it up, she pricked her finger. Didn't realize while she was throwing the cup away, got in her car and started to drive downtown to one of the Twin Towers. And as she was driving, at some point, she looked down, and on her blouse, there were drops of blood. She said to herself in her professionalism, I can't go to work like this. So she turned around and went back home to change her blouse. When she walked in the house, the TV was on, and the airplane was hitting the tower that she would have been in. Somebody says she was saved by the blood. Yeah. You, you don't hear me. She was saved by the, by, by, by the blood. Don't fight what God is doing in your life. 
he may be taking you another way to keep you from running into something that you would run into something if you went the way you wanted to go. And don't, don't cuss nobody out. Don't get mad at the train because it's going across the track. Don't, don't turn around and go the other way. If God stops you, just, just sit there and say, what, what do you want to say to me, Lord? You got me still. Speak to me. And just wait until the train leaves and then go on your way because God's got a plan. Amen. That's greater than our plan. The temple is built. The offerings have been burnt. Solomon consecrates the middle court in the temple. At that time, Solomon kept the feast for seven days. He made intercession to God. And when Solomon had finished the house, I wish I had a witness, the king Solomon successfully finished the house. The Lord appeared to Solomon and said, I have heard your prayer. I, I, I want you to know that God still answers prayer. He said to Solomon, I heard your prayer and I have chosen this place for myself. He says, I may shut up the heavens and there won't be any rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. But if my people, if, if my people who are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal the land. So read is the word of the God. If we do what we're supposed to do, God never breaks his promises. This is a conditional covenant between God and man. Conditional, buddy, because God said in this passage, if you do something, I will do something. And when we talk about the condition of the world, what we really ought to recognize is that we're talking about the condition of of a failing Christianity. I hate to say that. When is the last time you witnessed to somebody about who Jesus is? When is the last time you said to somebody, young man, let me ask you a question. Have you prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? When's the last time you said to somebody, come on and go with me to my father's house? When is the last time at your house, <clears throat> not looking in your window, you grab your family's hand and said, y'all, so-and-so just had a wreck. Somebody just passed away. Somebody just had a heart attack, a sickness happened in the family. Somebody just got arrested. When is the last time that the men of your family are. If no men were in the family, the woman, the, 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 the center of the family said, y'all come on in here, let's pray. Right. Too often we say, call Pastor Monroe. When every house that has a man in it that believes in Jesus has a pastor in the house. I said to somebody last night, in fact, it was the young couple, the newlyweds, I said to them the last night, I said to that young man, I said, who's, the, who's your wife's pastor? He said with a smile, Dr. Monroe. I said, that's at the church. Who's your wife's pastor at home? God made every man to be the head 
of his house. That, that, that's, that's, that doesn't mean make the most money. That, that doesn't mean raise the most sand. That, that, that doesn't mean he's like Tarzan of the jungle and he screams through the house and all of the animals are still before him because daddy's home and we got to fear him. God actually put daddy in the house to represent himself. Every man is the priest. Help me, Lord Jesus. Mighty quiet in here. Every man is the priest and the preacher and the pastor of his house. As a matter of fact, God holds every man responsible for the stewardship and salvation of his family. And so God, let me, let me fix it for you. And so God put the under shepherd in the church house.